and this lesson we're going to work on After Effects to begin our animations. So all you have to do is double click on project and go and find your illustrator file. But if you don't see this window project for whatever reason, make sure that you go to window and right here you're going to find project or you could use the shortcut control zero. Now just double click here or you could also go file import if you prefer file. But I think it's better if you just double click and go back there and just bring your illustrator file. Now a window like this is going to appear and here you can pick if you want footage or composition. If you go to footage, you can have all your layers merge or you could choose one of the layers. But for now we want composition and make sure that the foot and dimensions is layer size, not document. So I'm going to press OK and if I double click on my composition, I can open it. And now if I go right click and go composition settings, I can bring all these options. Now here you can see that my weight and height are the same as my illustrator file and that my frame rate is 30, which is fine for now. Now my duration is 120 and I can change the background color just by double clicking in there and change it to white. So I'm just going to press OK and then it's going to be fine. Now I'm going to work on my pencil, but you can see that the rest of my layers are there. So the great thing about having an illustrator file in here is that you can see that if I scale it, what you're going to see is that if I zoom in a little bit by using the wheel of my mouse, you can see that the edge is not that sharp. So if I go here and click on this little rectangle, you can see that now it is rendering better. And the reason for that is that illustrator is still showing the vector information. So that's a great advantage. But another thing that you can use here is that if you go and select your vector layer and you go right click, you can go here and create shapes from vector layer. So if you click, you can see that you still see your illustrator layer, but also now you have a shape layer right there on the top. So I can delete the illustrator layer. And now let's go and find, open our contents. You can see that every line that I created or every shape that I created in Illustrator is appearing here in After Effects. So now what I could do is go here to this little add and now find trim paths. Now click on that one. And when you do that, you can open the effect and Right now it's going to apply this effect to everything. So if I bring the end, the percentage down, you can see how everything is kind of getting drawn on. And also if I play with the start, the same is happening. And you can see here that I have a, a three multiple shapes simultaneously, which means that everything is happening at the same time. But I could also click and make them individually, which could make each one draw after the other one is completed. So maybe that's something that you want. And really this effect has taken us no time. So this is what we're going to be using to make our animations. So everything in After Effects that you have a stopwatch, you can animate it. And now you can see that if I move around the groups, the, that is going to determine the order in which they are going to be drawn on. So I'm going to make sure that first my bigger shapes are drawn. So first my rectangle and then my triangle and then the other lines, so something like that. And if I click on the stopwatch, I can add a keyframe and then go to, let's say, frame 30 and add another keyframe. And now this time we're going to go all the way to 100. So if I press N, I can make my work area to the size that I need it. And if I press my spacebar, I can have a little preview and you can see how the animation happens. And I can extend a little bit my work area so everything happens and you get a little bit of time more to see it. And now what I'm seeing is that uh, these lines, the ones that are on the bottom, the ones that are making the eraser, they should be get drawn first. So I want to move them a little bit to the top. So now the bigger lines have something to end up there. So now that's happening better. And now what I can do to make my animation even better is select both my keyframes and then press F9. That way I'm going to get a little bit easy ease on my beginning and on my end. And maybe this is happening too fast, so I can move my keyframe to 60. And let's go here to make my work area a little bit bigger. So now that I see how this is getting drawn on, 
I can go to end and click here to see the, the graph. And now in here I can see how as it begins, it goes slow and then it takes a little bit of speed and then it slows down as it goes to the end. So I need to make this a loop. So I'm going to select my first keyframe and press Ctrl C. And then I'm going to move all the way to the end and then press Ctrl B. So now you can see that it gets drawn and it, then it goes down. So that's something that I like. I'm going to bring this one here and then let's go to frame 70 and copy and paste that keyframe on frame 50. So it just stays like that for a while and then it goes out. So now if I go see my graph, I get something like this. I want this to start a little bit slower, so it's something like that, and then it goes a little bit faster, and then I want something similar to happen at the end, so I can move my graph a little bit like this, so my curves follow that speed, and you can see how they gain speed, and then they go out. So this is how easy you can create a line animation using the trim pads and just moving around your contents. So in the next lesson, we're going to work on a different technique using also trim pads, but animating them in a different way.